Uh, I guess when you get 17 games into the season undefeated, you got to feel pretty good about that, but then you got to guard against a letdown. Has there been any sign of that in practice? No, there hasn't, but, but you're always concerned about that, and, and a letdown tonight might be fatal because Hampshire's playing as well as anybody in the area. I think they're 9-2 and two since Christmas, and, and they've got a good ball club, and uh, I'm very concerned about tonight's game. What kind of scouting report do, the Tro do you have on the Trojans? Well, you know, they got a young kid developing inside by the name of Seth Combs that's been playing very well. Jim Alcar is a good outside player, Colby Nichols. Uh, they, they have a good team, and they've been playing good, sound, fundamental basketball, which Coach C does a good job of teaching. And uh, they, they always cause you problems because they're well coached. And let's talk a little bit about the Allegheny Campers dismantling Kaiser the other night by 45 points. Certainly the signs of a team on a roll. Uh, I guess, do you worry about peaking too early as well? Well, I think we're peaking at the right time. I, I think. You know, now's the time. We have to get it in gear to get through these next two weeks. Uh, there are no guarantees in the playoffs, and the playoff situation is very tight. So we need all these games. We need to be ready, and, and I think we've peaked at the right time. You always talk about Allegheny tradition and the guys who played before. Did you get any feedback from those guys? Yes, we do, and, and it makes me proud that, that they're pleased with the way the program is being run, and uh, they're proud of the way the kids are playing. And, uh, you, know, you know, it makes you feel good when you can talk to guys that played back in the 70s and the 60s and the 50s, and there's a lot of those guys sitting in these bleachers now, and, and that makes me feel good. Toby, Eric, good luck tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jamie. All righty. Jamie, it's going to be a good one tonight. The other night, Hampshire lost to Jefferson, a class ball club by only a dozen at Hampshire. So they have the ability to play Allegheny a lot better than Kaiser did the other night. I talked to Toby right before the uh, interview this evening, and I said, you look worried tonight, Toby. And he said, you know, games like this really bother me because it's one of those you just can't get a good feel for what's going to happen until you're well into the game. Well, we're going to find out about well into the game in not too long from right now. Commercial Video Services production of Channel 4 High School Basketball coming up right after this. Motor City Toyota Chevrolet Geo and Buick is proud to be a part of showcasing our high school athletes as they take to the courts during this 94 season. Motor City Toyota Chevrolet Geo and Buick understands hometown spirit, working as a team to bring their customers the best service, quality, and winning prices. Everyone's a winner at Motor City Toyota Chevrolet Geo and Buick, your hometown dealer. You're watching coverage of high school basketball. Welcome to high school basketball on cable channel four. Commercial video services this evening presenting the action to you. Allegheny and Hampshire. Allegheny owns one of its 17 wins over the Trojans from a county that is, uh, I think Romney is about 32 miles south of Cumberland. Very athletic team. Uh, their football teams at Hampshire very competitive over the years. And of course, their basketball program uh, a couple of years ago came up with back to back area championships. And we're ready to get underway here. Stepping into center circle with Seth Combs against Mike Harvey. And Hampshire comes up with the opening tip. And they'll go to work with the ball. And the shot on the left wing side is Chris Savany. And you saw the camper rebound there. This is. DJ Jesse blocked on the play by Seth Combs, but we've got a foul call. Yeah, Combs got the ball, but he followed through with the arm and got him with the body. Savini with that uh, rebound, bringing it up the court. And now DJ will go to the line for a pair. Your officials for tonight's game, George Getz and Tom Vent. And Jesse can't find the range on the first one. And one more to go. DJ trying to find the, uh, it, it must be tough to score the first points of the game from the foul line. Uh, the Trojans did that last night, or Wednesday night rather it was. You saw Jesse miss both ends, and the Trojans go to work. Savini, down low on the baseline, charging underneath is Mike Harriet, and we've got a foul into play. What happened on the play is Mike Fields got down low to try to take a charge, but stuck his knee out. 
And here's the foul. You see uh, Field just a little bit late in getting there. Comey Nichols gets the ball in. Driving the lane is Seth Combs. His shot is up too short, no good. And Mike Fields has the rebound. Outlets to Jesse. DJ, a little shake and bake at the point with Nichols. Gives it up to Fields. This is Denny Salas. Hampshire did a nice job of stopping the ball prior to the foul line. And Hampshire looks to be in a 2-3 zone, a matchup zone low. Driving in is Salas, leaves it on the baseline for Mark Harvey, and he walks. Turnover for Allegheny. You're this up. is news already. Allegheny hasn't scored, and we almost played a minute. Right. And the campers now putting on coast-to-coast -coast defensive pressure. They break the timeline with Mike Alkier. Alkier leaves it there for Nichols. Back again to Combs. Combs with a shot is good off the glass. Now, Hampshire successful. They got the ball to the middle. How often this year have we preached? <laughs> against the press, you have to get the ball in the middle. And a lot of teams have not been able to do that against Allegheny and turn the ball over. You've been exactly right every time you point that out. This is Mike Friend to Fields. This is Denny Salas inside to Friend. It's good from 12. And we're tied at two. Mike Harvey with the big basket. Six and a half to go in the first quarter. Hampshire breaking the timeline, finding Long on that side. Mike Harriet, he'll leave it out front for Alkire. Alkire drop pass in to Combs. Turn around Jay, partially blocked by Harvey. Getting the ball back and shooting is Combs. It's no good. Combs again, reverse layup. This is no good. Nichols with the ball, kicks it out for three. Savini, Savini rather, and his shot is no good. DJ Jesse cleans the boards off for the campers. See what Allegheny can do in a game where the pace is not what it's been. A pass inside, up and no good off the hands of Jake Dermer, and Hampshire coming down with the ball. This is Elkire, drop pass inside, intended there for Harriet, and a whistle on the play. The foul comes as DJ Jesse tries to play through the offensive man. Nice entry pass, and Jesse just not in any kind of defensive position to make an interception. Should have allowed the pass and then played good defense from there. Nichols in trouble, tries to get underneath, does. It's knocked out of bounds there by Jake Dermer. And Hampshire will maintain possession. Inbounding again is Colby Nichols. He wants the out of bounds. Violation is Hampshire cannot inbound the ball. Allegheny gets it. And that's got to please Toby Eric, because his, his defense now is putting immediate pressure on Hampshire and gives them different looks early in the ball game. Yeah, and that's going to be a key as they move into the playoffs. They have to have a number of different looks because player, good teams can prepare if they have enough time, and the playoffs allow you a little bit of time to do that. This is Jesse. Shake and bake on Nichols. Gives it out. Fields, 4-3. Off the back of the rim. No good. DJ Jesse with a rebound. The putback is through. He does that as well as anybody in the area, if not better. He wants the hang time on DJ Jesse as he pops that through. On the end of the floor, coming up with a big defensive play out of the hands of Harriet was Jake Dermer into the middle. Shot up by Savini, and it's good. We're tied at four with 5.04 to go in the first quarter. Hampshire's coach C has to like the way the pace of this game is going so far. We're tied at four, a little bit under five minutes to play in the quarter. Hampshire doing a good job. Jesse out front to Fields. Salas still holding, still looking. Gives it out front to Jesse once again. To Fields, and they'll rotate around. Fields drives, great pick by Jake Dermer. Fields goes to the glass and scores. With confidence. You make a move like that, you have to have confidence or else you will miss that shot. The big pick by number 32 of the campers allowed that field goal to be possible. Hampshire now breaks the timeline with Harriet. Down low, the shot up and good by Mike Alkire. Good movement on the baseline by Hampshire. Get the ball to the middle against the Allegheny Press, and you'll wind up with a three-on-two break opportunity. They found the wing, they get the layup, and we're tied at six. Salas to Fields. Back to Jesse at the point. To Mike Harvey. Leaves it there for Salas. Camper offense not doing a lot of motion right now as Fields gets it on the left wing. He'll drive on Alkire. Pump shot up, no good, and meeting the ball at the rim, Seth Holmes with a big rebound. Chris Savini with the ball for Hampshire. Inside, the shot by Harriet is good. Good turnaround, Jay, for Harriet. Look at this, Hampshire with an 8-6 lead. With 3.35 to go in the first quarter. Who to thunk it? Well, Allegheny has had quarters this year where they've been a little bit inconsistent. And what's leading to it on offense is they're standing it around a little bit, Jamie. That was an excellent observation. 
Fields trying to get it inside. Got there. Jake Dermer. He'll go to the glass and score for two. Dermer got the back door open a crack and flowed through for two. Almost pick and roll theory there as Jake was able to roll off and get to the hoop. We're tied at eight with the shot. Seth Combs. It is good. We are not tied any longer. 10-8. Hampshire leads. 3:05 to go in the first quarter. We'll see Steve Friend come off the bench for Allegheny. You can see him checking in as the camera passes the score table. Adam Whitaker will also make an appearance. DJ Jesse with the ball to Fields. Back out front to Salas. Jesse, he'll go for three. And it's too far. No good. Friend with a rebound. Harvey rather with a rebound. His shot is up. No good. And coming down with it is Seth Combs. Combs tipped away. Mike Fields drives, shoots, scores. Good look off by Mike Fields' paws. He fainted the head at least to Jesse, drew the defender in that direction. Nichols with a drive, and Colby Nichols will score off the glass, and it's 10 for Hampshire, 12 for the campers with 2.33 to go. In addition to getting the ball to the middle, if you can use a skip pass on the diagonal, that will also be pressure. Jesse to Dermer. Baseline is in and out, no good. Coming up again, Colby Nichols with a rebound. And Nichols already doing some good work on the boards, especially on the defensive boards for Hampshire. Yes, very, very good effort so far by the entire Trojan team. 2.08 to play. Allegheny down by two in the early going here at Campobello. As you said, Steve Friend in and also a player in that Toby Eric likes to say gives this team emotion, and that's Adam Whitaker. With the ball here is Mike Herriot. Cross court pass inside. They're going to call a foul on Steve Friend. Seth Holmes went up for the shot. Tom Bent with the call, and we'll get a look at it again. It looked pretty clean. They're going to say the body, though, down low. And you can see on the replay that Friend did indeed brush with the body down low, was clean up top. And Tom Friend, or Tom Bent, I should say, a friend of mine, uh, <laughs> with a, well, maybe not anymore. <laughs> Your Kelly Auto Service scoreboard shows a 12-11 score right now. Kelly Auto Service is featuring the Navigator 800. The all-season radio that holds the road in any weather. The shot up and no good. 13-10 your score. And best of all, that Kelly Navigator carries a 60,000-mile warranty. Jesse trying to make things happen in the middle. Has the ball blocked. And coming down with it is Hampshire Savini. Gives off on that right side to Alkire. He'll drive. Good no-look pass to Nichols. Nichols on the baseline. No good. And Jesse with an emphatic rebound for the campers. Brings it up the floor to Dermer. Dermer, a little stop and go. Fakes the pull up there from 18. Gives it to Whitaker. Zip pass inside. Good look by Adam Whitaker. And a good play by DJ Jesse. Running a triangle look as they take Dermer with the ball to Whitaker. Quickly inside to the block to Jesse for the basket. 13-12 your score. And a walk called on Seth Combs. And the campers will get it back with 119 to go in the first quarter down by one. What made the last play work was the quickness of the movement of the basketball. If you hold it there, the defense can recover and adjust. But if you go bang, bang, you're going to get the basket. Nice job by Whitaker with the pass inside. Salas gives it to Jesse, back to Salas. Jesse again. To Salas, now to Whitaker, down low. To Dermer, back to Whitaker again. And Salas still looking for traffic. Gives it to Friend. This is Whitaker on the drive. Whitaker, scoop shot, scores with a fadeaway right hand. A little flash and flare by Adam Whitaker. Trojans, re or excuse me, the Trojans trail now by one as the campers take a 14-13 lead with 45 seconds to go. The shot up and no good by Mike Alkire and a whistle on the play. Hampshire gets the ball down court and then attacks. They had a two on one, they had Dermer deep. He sprinted out through the corner. The press did not recover on the opposite side. So Dermer had to sprint back, and that's where he got into the foul situation. The foul was on Jake Dermer, his first team foul number four on the campers. Okay, you get a look here. Here's Hampshire with the ball. They're going to work it right side. Now Jake's the only one back, and there's that bounce pass. And, of course, Jake has to recover and get back over there, and there's the foul. On the line for two is Mike Alkire. It is up and good. And I, I meant to say this last time we were on here because you and I were at the, the last game we did together. I got myself in trouble by saying Jake Dermer reminded me a lot of Bill Lambeer. And uh, <laughs> Mrs. Dermer, I understand, took a little exception to that man. It had nothing to do with your son's looks. I think Jake's a very handsome looking young lad <laughs> indeed. It's just his style of play reminds me of someone else. With the drive, the shot, will we get an offensive foul? Holmes with the shot. 
And it is an offensive foul, number 42, Seth Combs. Yeah. I think it was Fields that set up camp here. Yeah, there's Michael Fields setting up camp with uh, at least two seconds uh, into the paint there before the contact. 26 seconds to go in the quarter. Hampshire up by one. Allegheny may play for one shot. <laughs> That's a good point as they put it in play to Fields, back to Dermer. They haven't had to practice this a lot. <laughs> to Whitaker. This is Salas, double teamed on the sideline. Then he gets it out to Whitaker. Whitaker over here to Dermer. Jake, 4-3. It's no good, too long. Coming down with a rebound and dribbling out of plans was Hampshire's Mike Harry. But I'll tell you who made that play was Adam Whitaker with his hustle. Why oh, he har harassed him. <laughs> Watch him. Here's Whitaker here. And then finally, with all the screaming and yelling and uh, gouging at the ball it comes out fields with 10 scores on a driving one-handed layup you talked about that confidence and there it was paul on the part of mike fields one second to go the shot is thrown will not count as the campers in the first quarter of this play in an unusual position no a usual position they're up by one 16 15 we'll be back with second quarter action right after this Motor City Toyota Chevrolet Geo and Buick is proud to be a part of showcasing our high school athletes as they take to the courts during this 94 season. Motor City Toyota Chevrolet Geo and Buick understands hometown spirit, working as a team to bring their customers the best service, quality, and winning prices. Everyone's a winner at Motor City Toyota Chevrolet Geo and Buick, your hometown dealer. You're watching coverage of high school basketball. You get a look at the Allegheny cheerleaders, and that is a squad. A very athletic squad. And very talented. Let's take a look. Outstanding. Symmetry, symmetry. That's the part that hurts <laughs> watching them toss down like that. Yeah, well, I've... <laughs> <laughs> like I said, we've never been tossed down. <clears throat> well, 16-15 is your score. The campers have uh, a first quarter score. They were behind most of this first quarter. Paul had to fight back very valiantly, and they did come back, and they have a one-point lead here beginning of the second quarter. Well, the, the key to Hampshire's success, and a lot of coaches will take notes on this game, is they were able to break the Allegheny pressure on a number of occasions, and when they did break the press, they didn't hold the ball up. They attacked immediately, right. and that led to 15 points in the first quarter. I would imagine uh, where many teams would succumb to that pressure, Hampshire converted as many baskets in the first quarter as Allegheny would have if it would have been normal Allegheny first quarter with the press that, say, Kaiser the other night. And the 2-3 zone by Hampshire is not allowing the campers to get inside. No, and they're very active in it, too. And, and they're given a number of different looks out of the 2-3. Whitaker gives it to Fields. Cross court to Salas. This is Jake Dermer taking a look. Nothing open on the inside. Goes across court for Denny Salas. Salas on the dribble. Still on the dribble. Tries to feed, comes out. Here's Whitaker. Faints the three. Shoots now, it back out to Salas. They're also showing a little uh, triangle and two look with uh, some zone principles. A nice pass to Salas who gets the basket. Was that Whitaker? That was Whitaker. And a nice play there also as the campers get a steal here. Friend tips it to Fields, the shot up, no good. Friend with a rebound, brought it down, had it slapped out of his hands, and we have a foul on the play. Okay, let's play a little coach here now. If it's my team, if I'm coaching Hampshire, I may be tempted to take a timeout if Allegheny is able to convert on this possession. Because so far, it's an 18-15 game, it would be 20-15. to 15. Hey, let's stop it, let's get back to what we were doing well and try to keep it close. You're exactly right, because there's no real particular rhythm to this game yet on either side. Dump pass inside, Desi gets it in there from Adam Whitaker. Now Coach C might choose to wait a little longer because in high school you only have the four timeouts. Ball is tipped in the middle court again. Whitaker made the tip, 
Gets the ball back, doing a little curly Neil Shuffle on the floor with one knee. Tied up on the inside, and a possession arrow will favor the Hampshire Trojans. And, and an injury on the floor, as you see Seth Holmes on the ground, he's favoring either the left knee or the left ankle. Well, he looks like he's going to be able to walk it off. Ooh. And that's that's good news. Uh, Toby Eric commented on Combs developing as a big man, and uh, that's something that Hampshire needs. Inbound to the ball to Brian Brill. Field steals, drive, shoots, scores on the play. And right away, the Trojans want to talk this out and take a timeout. So we'll take a break. 6.44 to go in the second quarter. It's the Campers 22, the Trojans 15. We'll be back right after this. Motor City Toyota Chevrolet Geo and Buick is proud to be a part of showcasing our high school athletes as they take to the courts during this 94 season. Motor City Toyota Chevrolet Geo and Buick understands hometown spirit, working as a team to bring their customers the best service, quality, and winning prices. Everyone's a winner at Motor City Toyota Chevrolet Geo and Buick, your hometown dealer. You're watching coverage of high school basketball. If you want to have a chance against Allegheny, you cannot let the avalanche start and continue. Coach C takes a timeout. The basket after I would, but I think he did eminently the right thing. It's 22-15. Let's see how they attack the Allegheny pressure. Well, Allegheny, Paul, in the meantime, has connected on three of four turnovers. Yeah, and the guy that is igniting this is Adam Whitaker. You know, we commented earlier in the game that Allegheny seemed to be standing around a little bit. When he right. got in the game, they quit standing around. So Hampshire inbounding, Combs gets it in and gets it into Savini. Savini cross court for Harriet. Harriet trapped, gets it in the middle. Savini again, down low. On the drive, up and no good by Mike Harriet. Missed the layup, good, but good attack of the press. This is Salas on the drive, shot partially blocked in the play by Brian Brill. Jesse gets it back, forces it up, it's good, he's fouled, you count it. Okay, here it comes, juggling around, what a pass by Salas, bounce pass to Jesse. Jesse has enough time to gather the ball, find the basket, get it up and in. That's a very, that's, that, that's a play that will occur when you know where your other players are and you've played with them long enough. You know DJ's in there somewhere, let's give him a chance to be athletic. Dennis did that very, very well. Is there another player in this area that can go to the hole as strong as DJ Jesse? I don't believe so. Misfires on the extra point. Steve Friend gets tied up inside. The foul on that play was on number 42, Seth Holmes. And now a foul on Allegheny Campers. And picking it up is Steve Friend, number 31. His second, team foul number five. It's a pretty good break for Hampshire. They could have gone down by 10. Now they get a chance to attack the press again. Savini gets it back to Nichols. And they go to Harriet. Harriet harassed there, goes to Savini. He gets it down the floor to Brill and a foul on the play. Okay, Hampshire just almost a half a hand slow. What they want to do with the Allegheny trap is bring the trap, but before the trap gets there, get the ball away. Right. Now, here comes the Allegheny trap, and uh, they come up the sideline, they try to trap there, and that was a good job by 24 there at the timeline, Savini. So Mike Elkire to inbound to the right of his basket, Adam Whitaker opposes him. Still looking, they get it in. They get it there to Nichols. Colby Nichols, give and go to Savini. No, the shot was up by Alpire and a foul in the play. Looks like Whitaker's going to be whistled for it. And yeah, I believe Jake Dermer's going to get whistled yeah. for it. Let's see. Jake does get whistled for it. Jake says, I went straight up. And <laughs> Adam says, yeah, he went straight up. <laughs> right into me. So for Dermer, that is his second. Team foul number seven. That's significant now, as Hampshire will be in the bonus. Now that's two fouls on Dermer. Now Kyer puts in the first, makes it 24-16 Allegheny. 6.04 to go in the second quarter. Now Kyer second, hit every bit of that rim before falling down through. And it's 24-17. And Hampshire with full court pressure. So Whitaker gets a good pass off the fields and that was good athletic move there by Whitaker as Jesse's pass was behind him. He managed to put the brakes on and still got it to the fields but out of bounds. 
Brill gets it back. Nichols again. Whitaker there flying out of your picture. Back into Nichols. Out of bounds. Off the hands of Mike Alkire. And the campers get a benefit of another turnover. Now, if I make it a pick now, I'm going to try to put a lot of pressure on Harriet in the backcourt because he looks the least confident of the Trojans. And he's handling the ball on one of their reversals. Whitaker out. Mike Harvey back in. This is Dermer for two from 15 is good. 26-17. Trojan behind the campers. A little tight walk act by there by Brill. This is Nichols to Savini. Savini on the dribble, on the side to Brill on the baseline. Brill trying to drop pass. Fields took it out of there, out of bounds. 5.23 to go in the second quarter. And Hampshire to inbound. It will be Mike Alkire to do it. Outside of a slipper of bobble here, I think Hampshire's playing an excellent basketball game against Allegheny. Good conceived game plan, good execution for the most part. Colby Nichols with the shot, no good. DJ Jesse comes down with a rebound. Uh, let's there to Fields. Oh, and he missed Dermer. He was wide open on the right side. Okay, it's the 2-3 look this time down by Hampshire. And they're not matching up out of that into that uh, uh, junk defense. Salas back to Fields to Jesse for two on the baseline. Rimmed out, no good, as you saw. And Harriet with the rebound. A foul and a play there. Denny Salas will be charged for this as he went across court trying to take the ball away from Mike Alkire and made contact. Well, Salas playing like a football center. You see him in the back, and now he sprints to try to intercept the ball, but it's there a little bit late and uh, gets called for pass interference. <laughs> well, we pointed out uh, at the Allegheny-Fort Hill game at Fort Hill earlier that the campers on defense, they do a lot of ball hawking. They watch tendencies on teams, and they read the passer's eyes very often. When I said uh, football center, I meant safety. <laughs> right. Alkire missed the first of one and one. Jesse got the rebound. And the campers go back to work with 4.45 to go in the second quarter. This is Jesse. Cross court to Fields. Salas out front. Looks to drive to Fields again. Open 12-footer is good. Okay, Salas did something there. He tried to penetrate the zone. He brought the zone to him and then kicked it out to Fields, and that created the opportunity. 28-17, 4.20 to go. Outstanding point. Savini sees a lane, drives in, and a foul to play. They're going to call Jake Dermer for a block. You can see that coming. Jake saw him. The lane open. Savini made the charge. Jake tried to get himself set up in there, but draws the blocking foul. Oh, it's bang, bang, and it's going to be Dermer's third foul, and he's going to come out of the lineup. He's limping a little bit, too, because there was a heck of a collision. There's Dermer getting there, but I, look, I think it's a matter of, uh, uh, of debate whether he's there or not, and I think any time it's that bang, bang, you can't fault the official either way. Yeah, you saw that at a different angle, and it looked like uh, Mike just got there just a tad too late. So one and one for Chris Savini. And it does not find the mark. And coming down with the rebound is Scott Robinette. 28-17. Campers lead with 4-10 to go. Inside, Robinette, no look pass to Fields. Fields from 18, up no good. Jesse with a tip for two. You have to get a body on DJ Jesse and keep him off the boards. 30-17. Brill gets it to Alpire, and he'll score the layup. And that is a play Hampshire has run at least three times this half that's been very successful for them. Yeah, most teams succumb because Allegheny capitalizes on their opponent's indecision against the press. Hampshire hasn't had that problem too much tonight. Salas to Fields to Mike Harvey. Back to Fields once again, out front to Salas. Salas inside, here's Scott Robin, it puts it on the floor, drives, miss from point blank range, and it goes out of bounds. Last touch by the campers. Well, he lost control of the ball on the way up. He got the ball through, and then almost was shocked that he had a clear path. Mike Field stepped right in front of this pass, goes to Salas. His shot from five is up, and it's no good. Jesse chipped the rebound. We've got a late call in the middle on a foul. A late whistle by George Getz. Nonetheless, it will count against the campers, and it'll be on DJ Jesse. Jesse commits the foul. That'll be his second. Allegheny by 11 with 319 to play. And you get a look again at what's going on here. Here's the shot up and no good. And then DJ just a little bit over the shoulder. And the shoulder got there after DJ had committed his path to the ball. Right. So that puts Brian Brill on the line for one and one. Your Dr. Paul Lynn sponsored this scoreboard. 
Dental Dental Care for the entire family. Located on 115 South Center Street in Cumberland, Dr. Lynn would like to wish good luck to all of our local teams. 30-19 with 3.14 to go as Hampshire puts it in play. Nichols. Ross Court to Alkire. Blocked by Fields. Nichols doing a nice job getting it back, and they go back to Brill. And Brill, you talked about indecision. Looked like he didn't want to know where to go with the ball when he first got it. This is Harriet trying to battle inside. Can't do a thing with it. And a violation called. Yeah, uh, Brill coming off the bench, indecisive. Harriet has been a little bit indecisive all game, except at fast motion, he's <laughs> he doesn't look quite as indecisive. That three seconds went by awful fast then. <laughs> 2.45 to go in the second quarter, 30-19, the campers lead. That was the Hampshire version of the play. <laughs> he was out of there. Mike Harvey up front to Fields. This is Salas on the roll, right wing. Still with a drive. Tries to feed into Scott Robinett through his legs. Ball's loose on the floor, no. Comes up with Alkire, and Alkire leaves it there for Mike Harriet. Savini brings it down to Brill. Brill inside intended there for Harriet and a good slap by Mike Friend. It goes out of bounds off his hands, though. Okay, Mike Harvey will overplay and then slap down at the ball as it is entered. That's a technique taught by the Allegheny coaching staff that has been effective all season long. Now to inbound, looking for help. Has to go way out to Savini. With Salas on him, and a timeout called on the play as something in the line of debris has come out on the floor. That's a tough call for George Getz because you do not want to interrupt the flow of the play if Hampshire has a chance to score out of that. And I don't know if somebody threw it on the court or not because they're going to summon the coaches to the side uh, to the scores table. And let's see what the uh, they're going to summon I believe Jack Gilmore or Dave Merrill I guess is now going to be uh, uh, summoned over to take a look at what's going on. I don't know if we have that condensation problem we had a couple weeks ago recurring. No, I don't believe so, because the object that George kicked off the floor was black. But we're ready to go underway now as Alkire to inbound. Gets it across to Brill. Out front to Savini. Overplayed there by Salas. Savini drives, had the ball tipped out of his hands by DJ Jesse. Scott Robinette coming up with a loose ball. Gives it to Salas. Salas with a herky-jerky move upside. Goes to Mike Harvey. And a foul, no, a walk call on Mike Harvey. Salas did the herky-jerky, Harvey did the hokey-pokey. <laughs> and Hampshire takes over with 1.57 to go in the second quarter. This is Mike Alkire to Nichols. Down the floor, intended for Savini, and it's picked off by Mike Fields. It's one of the hidden dangers of a press, a defender recovering, often you don't see because you're looking at him to come up on you rather than to go back on you. This is Salas on the baseline looking for help and tries to get at the field, still loose, and Salas picks it up. Here's Mike Harvey for two. It's good from 15. Now Harvey playing the Jake Dermer role now, while Robinette is playing the uh, center position. 32-19, 1.23 to go in the first half of this game. Savini gets it down floor, and again, an unforced error as they threw it away over the head of Mike Brill. Well, you can tell that Hampshire has practiced against this press, uh, this type of press and the concept and they're doing the right things they're executing or misfiring sometimes but I don't think they're doing badly at all you get now here's George Getz with the uh, the the boot and he pulls a Norwood and then finally does uh, kick it off the court in the meantime Hampshire has called a timeout they want to get things straightened out as the Allegheny camper cheerleaders are around on the floor uh, Paul, you mentioned it in the first half, and so right, when the uh, Allegheny campers came out looking a little lethargic, they brought Adam Whitaker in, and Whitaker put the spark to this team, and it's been DJ Jesse warming up uh, in the meantime, doing a lot of damage. We've seen Mike Harvey with some good moves here in the first half. Yeah, we have. Uh, Harvey has been one of the things that has uh, maybe made uh, Allegheny uh, a better team on the press because he's mo more mobile on the back line and he allows more turnovers. There's your Kelly Auto Service scoreboard. Kelly Auto Service is featuring the Voyager 1000 Touring Edition radio. It's the ideal marriage of luxury and performance. Find the Voyager at Kelly Auto Service, and you'll see that it's warranted for an incredible 60,000 miles. 
32 19 with 115 to go in the first half as Denny Salas brings it up for the Allegheny campers Hampshire matches up man to man Jesse holds and looks gets it inside Mike Harvey head faint one gets it back out and we've got a foul no a step on the end line Tom Vent right on the button there called a step on the end line and Hampshire will take over with 101 to go in the first half. Adam change, Whitaker. The change of defense is out of the timeout, created a turnover. And Whitaker creates a turnover, goes to the glass. It's up no good. Jesse with a rebound. His shot up. It's no good. Partially blocked. Whitaker gets the replay. Back into the lane and a foul call. Camper fans thought DJ got hammered. And finally, the foul is whistled as Whitaker goes back to the hole. Here's DJ. Brings the ball down and then goes up. Look pretty Nobody clean. touched him. Yeah, all right, you were. It's a reputation that will create a lot of yells because usually he'll go straight up and just put that back in from five right. feet. The foul on Chris Savini is his first. He foul number five into the lineup for Hampshire. Bruce Van Meter, he's running the show right now against Salas. To Harriet. Harriet stops in the lane, is up and good. One bounce and throw. 32 21, half a minute to go here in the second quarter. Salas will bring it up now. We'll see if the campers want to spread for one. This is Whitaker. In the corner to Jesse. Back to Whitaker. Salas. With the feint to Whitaker again. To Salas with 14. To Jesse. To Fields with 12 and a foul on the inside. Mike Harvey and Kobe Nichols were going at it on the inside. You take a look at Toby Eric. The foul is called on Mike Harriet, number 30, however. His second, team foul number six. So the campers will put it back in play with 11 ticks to go. DJ will inbound. Watch for DJ stepping back in. Salas picked off by Van Meter. With only one man to beat, Van Meter goes to the hole, does not score, but he's fouled by Mike Fields. Boy, if Fields had it to do again, he probably would not. Five seconds to play in the half. And this will give... Hampshire a one and one opportunity you know and I think Van Meter that was a pretty casual foul well yeah Van Meter did a better job of making it look like a foul than it actually was because <laughs> what he did is he kind of left his hip back there alongside of Fields and put the shot up looked a little bit awkward so eh, okay give him the foul so Van Meter has two the push shot is up and no good and right now that becomes a good foul <laughs> Well, it's two fouls on fields. Right. And Allegheny in a little bit of foul trouble, but that's minimized a little bit by the depth that Toby Eric has to play with. One more for Bruce Van Meter. It is up, and this one's good. 32-22 with five seconds left to go. Whitaker with four on the drive. Stops for three. It is off the back of the iron. No good. And that will end the first half. Some good basketball played on both sides of this floor, both in white and green. We'll go to the halftime with your score, Allegheny 32 and Hampshire 22. We'll be back right after this. Allegheny Community College, a two-year school based in Cumberland, Maryland, is big enough to provide students a wide range of opportunities, yet small enough to offer that personal touch. Delivering academic and related services in a personalized way makes for a caring atmosphere that helps students from diverse backgrounds, ages, and experiences achieve their goals. The campus, nestled in the mountains of scenic western Maryland, has served the citizens of Allegheny County for over three decades. Although community is our middle name, ACC is also very much a regional institution. Students from neighboring West Virginia and Pennsylvania, as well as other communities in Maryland, seek out an ACC education in increasing numbers. All have the assurance that comes with full accreditation by the Middle States Association of Colleges and Secondary Schools. Many of our programs have additional certification by national professional groups. Approximately 3,000 students attend credit classes at the college's main campus on Willowbrook Road and at centers in Somerset and Everett, Pennsylvania. 
Wherever they are enrolled, students find that ACC delivers high quality education at tuition they can afford. The fact that ACC is close to home is a further savings to students and for many ensures that the dream of a college education becomes a reality. We're a friendly place where students find the academic programs and other activities to meet their needs. The college prides itself on creating a supportive environment where all members of ACC's varied student body can achieve their fullest potential. Our student body is a mix of those just out of high school and older, non-traditional students enrolled on a full-time or part-time basis. Students of all backgrounds feel comfortable here whether they are preparing for a first career or a career change. Teaching and learning is what our college is all about. ACC is fortunate to have a quality faculty that has teaching and service to students as its primary mission. Students appreciate this emphasis on learning and surveys show that they also like the individualized attention that a low faculty to student ratio makes possible. Classes are small so student-faculty interaction is great. Outside the classroom, ACC faculty are readily available, and the door is always open, whether for advising, help on the day's lessons, or any other matter. Our accomplished faculty members use the latest teaching techniques to help students learn with up-to-date technologies, including computers, which are available in every classroom building. Video presentations enhance many learning situations, and satellite reception offers infinite educational opportunities. Selected courses are offered by way of TV, which provides opportunities for students with busy schedules. Students at ACC choose from a large assortment of programs that prepare graduates for transfer to a four-year institution or for direct entry into the job market. Allegheny Community College, the personal touch that only a small college can provide. All right, we're back at Allegheny High School. The campers lead at halftime, 32-22. Here's how Hampshire is doing a pretty decent job at attacking the Allegheny Press. See, they, they look to get the defenders over to them and then get the ball to the middle. Now, they missed the layup here but the execution of breaking the press is very, very good. As a matter of fact, I think Hampshire's probably missed three or four layups, and that would make it a lot closer game. There's your halftime score at 32-22. And right you are, because Hampshire has left so many balls on the rim. And Allegheny, first half. Allegheny hasn't really shot the ball very well in the first half either. No. We're used to seeing the camper shoot maybe 60% at times, yeah. and uh, I'd be surprised if they were above 40%. As I mentioned early in the second quarter, didn't really seem to be a rhythm to this game. And that, that may sound funny to, to the basketball aficionado. You know what we're talking about. You just you feel uh, the, the offense or defense working in a set way that uh, the game gets into a zone where uh, it just sort of flows together. And we've been kind of up and down the floor all night with us. Now, we're, you get a look at Jamie O'Hanlon there. The man. Why? who uh, has covered basketball in this area for several years. Boy, it's and been a joy. And it's also a whole heck of a lot of fun working with you, Paul. Oh, really? Yes, indeed. Must have a pretty depressing life there, son. <laughs> <laughs> Allegheny starts with the ball. And Salas will take it. Hampshire opens up man to man. In the corner to Jesse. Back it in there to Jake Dermer. And a foul on the play as a holding call on the inside. And there was something that you don't always like to see your big man or, or even uh, someone of uh, Dermer's size of four. Bring that ball down. But Dake does such a nice job. Watch him shoulder into this group. Yeah, what he was going to the dribble there and instead of pumping with the ball. And there's a little bit of a difference there. You still don't like to see him bring it down. But since he was going to the dribble, it's a little bit more acceptable. It's a 2 3 zone by Hampshire on the out of bounds play. And a critical foul. Here's Derner. Turner on Jay. One victory lapping down through for two. The foul is on Mike Harriet. That is his third. This is Colby Nichols. Looking for Harriet underneath. Harriet on the drive. Puts it up. Blocked on a beautiful play by Mike Harvey. Twice he gets him with a jam. And it comes down for the campers. 
taken away by Savini. And we have a foul on the play. That'll be three fouls on DJ Jesse. Okay, here's your foul situation. Harriet with three and Combs with three for Hampshire. Jesse, Friend, and Dermer with three for Allegheny. Dermer with three and limited action in the first half. And we're just underway here in the third quarter. This is Mike Elkire dribbling through two campers. Goes on the right wing side, in and out of the hands of Seth Combs, and it'll belong to the campers. So Allegheny will get a chance to work off the turnover as Mike Harvey leaves it there for Denny Salas. Now this is a be careful time for the Hampshire Trojans. Allegheny with a 12 point lead. A basket here could make it 14 and a steal on a press and all of a sudden it's 16 and it's almost Katie bar the door time. Jesse going to work. The drive is up no good on the baseline right. And coming down with the rebound is Mike Harriet. He'll leave it there for Savini. Cross court to Alkire. This is Combs trying to give and go. And last touch by Mike Alkire. So again the campers will get the turnover. You know, one of the negatives to Allegheny getting a lot of turnovers off the press in recent games is that they really haven't had to use their half-court offense very much. Correct. And you're seeing a little bit more one-on-one -on -one play that I believe Toby Eric might want to see. Dermer, drop pass inside. Mike Carvey gets three off the spin move and score. And as I say that, they work a really good play, getting <laughs> the gut ball inside. 36-22, 6.20 to go in the third quarter. Savini gets the ball from Harriet and will drive in. This is Colby Nichols against Mike Harvey, and he's rejected for a third time by Harvey. Here's Salas on the drive, scores off the glass from the feed by DJ Jesse. Created by Jesse, and now a timeout whistle, and that's a good one by Hampshire. That, there's that 16-point lead, 38-22, six minutes to play in the third. Here comes your basketball sandwich right here. Watch Mike Harvey around here with the right hand, keeps the body away, and boom. Okay, here's DJ on the break. Jesse. Intercepts the ball, and now uh, we're going to wait a second as we contemplate what DJ is going to do. Let's get another look. Let's go and get another look at this. Now we'll get a look at the the block shot again. Harvey, nice job at not leaving his feet. Now Jesse here will go to the opposite side and draw the defender, leaving the layup lane open for Salas. And doing a nice job of hiding the ball and no look pass, so the defender Savini never had his chance to never had a chance to turn into Denny Salas. Your Kelly Auto Service scoreboard. Hey, if you're looking for a port in a storm, check out the Kelly Mariner 600 All Season Radio. The M600 promises dependable all season performance, especially on wet roads. See the Kelly Auto Service store in Braddock Square, LaVale. See, I would contend that Savini did the right thing because he went to uh, uh, cut off Jesse. What has to happen is you have to recover on defense from the other players to get back there and help with Salas. You just want to stop DJ at that point on that two on one and hope that your recovery is such that you can prohibit the basket. We're underway once again as Combs gets the ball across midcourt to Nichols. Nichols for Savini, and they'll put it to work. Alkire drop pass inside. A Combs, the shot is good. Seth Combs was very quiet in the first half, Paul. Well, Dermer's being a little bit careful there, too. Dermer with three fouls, doesn't want to pick up his fourth here in the uh, third quarter. 38-24, the campers lead. Five and a half to go in the third quarter. As Salas gets the ball from Mike Fields to Jesse. DJ on the drive, dump pass for Harvey. Back out, this is Mike Fields. Double clutch, it's up and no good. Fields got his own rebound, gave it up, and this is Jake Dermer with it. Dermer on the drive. His running one-hander is no good, but a foul on the play. Dermer, seeing that the defense was not ready to stop his path to the basket, took it there and drew the foul. The foul on number 44, Colby Nichols. See, Dermer now on the dribble, now goes baseline, and Hampshire not ready to take the baseline away. So that's good recognition of the defense by Jake. He saw Nichols there just trying to get out of the way, but he did get the foul call. Dermer. Puts the first one through, makes it 39-24. Anytime you try to get out of the way on defense, you're in big trouble. You betcha. The foul on Nichols is his first. Dermer with a second, and it's good. And we've talked time and time again, Paul, how well this camper team shoots from the free throw line. Ahead, good save by Mike Harriet. Still in the baseline, trapped out front. Goes out to Evans. There's Savini to Nichols inside. Up and good, good left-handed move by Mike Harrion. Allegheny fell asleep a little bit on defense, letting Harriet loose underneath. He cut toward the basket and did not seem to have the advantage of a pick. 40 to 26, Allegheny leads with 4.45 to go as Salas 
Gives it to Mike Fields. Fields holds, looks intended for Dermott. Tip back there. Good play by Savini. And Salas has the ball for the campers. Not much moving on the offense again for Allegheny as Jesse gets it up front. This is Fields for 15. It's short, no good. Fields got his own rebound. The ball's on the floor. Still loose. Diving around for it. Ball still loose. And Mike Harvey ties up with Colby Nichols. And the arrow favors the campers. Uh, that's what most people wanted to see today when Harding and Kerrigan got together. <laughs> <laughs> but they did not see that. On the court, and that's good, good action by both teams. No cheap shots. Sometimes you'll see somebody throw a knee in a pile like that. Nothing like that in this game. Not at all. Both coaches have their teams under control. Hampshire, my mistake, has the possession arrow. This is Nichols. Tipped by Harvey twice, going up with a shot and short. Hit the bottom of the backboard with Harriet. Shot up again. This time, Jesse gets it. Long rebound. Campers, two on one. Dermer drives, shoots, scores off the glass to the left side. Excellent outlet pass by DJ Jesse, and Jake just took it from there. 42 30 26 with under four to go in the third quarter. Alkire gives it off. This is Combs on the drive, gives it up to Dermer. And Jake on the run. The camper is four on two. Leaves it for Jesse. Oh, it crawled over the rim. Oh, -ho, call 911. That was a shot and a half. The Hampshire coach is up and uh, say, hey, before all that happened, there was a foul down here. And I think very quickly, Coach C is going to. Uh, Plead his case, and now he's going back to coaching his team. Now here's the uh, shot by Jake, feeding off to Jesse, and Jesse getting the roll, using the English that you could put on a basketball with not a lot of room to operate in. I think Jesse got the ball late there and made the best of a, a relatively bad break situation. 44-26, the campers lead. That and was not the easiest layup that you're going to see. No, <laughs> not at all. This is Brill once again battling there with Adam Whitaker. Brill with it. Whitaker on him. They get it down to Combs and a foul in the play. And oh my, this is on Jake Dermer. This is not good news. Well, it's his fourth foul, and what happens is he uses his backhand to hold the offensive player while he tries to overplay him. Inbounded. Dermer knocked it out of bounds again. And the Trojans will put it in play this time from the left side of the board. Jake will come out. Robinette will come in. More size for Allegheny. They give up a little bit in quickness. And that is a second team foul, as you mentioned, four on Jake Dermer. Brill for three. It's up. We got a whistle underneath. It's no good. And we've got a pushing foul. And Adam Whitaker will get the call. And it will be a three-shot foul unless they whistle this uh, no, this is after going the on the shot. floor. Yeah, you're right. The whistle sounded after the shot had been put off. And Whitaker was actually away from the shooter at that time. So Alkire will put it in play with 3.13 to go here in the third quarter. Georgia Getz starting to get that look in his eye, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, <laughs> he does. Savini gets it. He'll put it up for three. It's in and out, no good. Whitaker battles Nichols for the rebound, comes up with the ball. I call that the Carlton look. <laughs> to Salas. To Fields, thinks the three, back to Salas. Again with a dribble inside for Robinette. Hook shot is up, got the legs it crawled through. That time the big guy showing he does have hands on occasion. Nice stop shot by Scott Robinette. This is Brill, giving off the Nichols. Nichols on the drive shot, rejected by Steve Friend. And a big save by Michael Fields. With that big wingspan out there and got it off to Robinette. That's the fourth block shot tonight by the campers, at least. And this is Denny Salas. Dermer has three of them. Steve Friend gives it off to Whitaker. Holds and looks in the corner, now to Salas. To Fields. Back to Salas. Still not a lot of movement inside on the Allegheny offense. As Fields takes a look. Back to Salas, 2.09 to go in the third quarter. Whitaker to Friend. Friend. Drop pass inside for Robinette. Turn around, Jay, from five. That's no good. Robinette gets the loose ball and a foul on the play. No, a walk. They always seem to see the little things on the big guys. Right. <laughs> Such a target. He's 6'9. Under two minutes to go. As Alkire brings it out front. Friend with a steal. 
on the break and missed the jam. My, oh my, we've got a technical foul. Yes, it'll be a technical foul called by George Getz on Steve Friend for hanging on the rim. I kind of had the feeling we're going to get this call, especially okay. when a player like this misses that kind of jam. They'll have a tendency to get deep and hang on to the rim. See, Fields is behind him and is ready to follow up. But I think, I don't know what the rule is in high school. In college, you're allowed to hang to protect yourself. Right. If it's the same in high school, I would disagree with the call. Mm -hmm. But since I don't know the rule, I won't disagree with the call because uh, he had guys coming down behind him. And you have the right to protect yourself. And even if it does mean a technical here, I'm saying to Steve Friend, that's okay because, look, we don't want you landing on your back. Right. One more to go for Mike Alcar. Missed the first. Rims out on the second. Well, no harm so far, but Hampshire will get the ball back at midcourt with 1.42 to go in the third quarter. Toby Eric's still up. He's still hot about that play. He wants to talk with George Getz. Now and he'll have the opportunity to do so. Now they're going to try to discuss the foul situation. Now in junior college and college basketball, a technical foul like that counts not only as a personal foul, but a team foul. And in high school, that's different. It doesn't happen that way. Yeah. Mike Carter will check in for the Allegheny campers. He won't now. Well, and George Getz had handed the basketball to Mike Alkyer, and he waves Mike Carter off the floor. We take a look at the Allegheny bench. Looking like air traffic controllers. <laughs> Up in arms, literally. So well, Alcard inbound. They're landing the Jets now. They do get it in to Combs. Combs was friend on him. The campers in man-to-man -man defense to Brill. No, that's Van Meter in the game now. Gives it off to Harriet. To Van Meter. No to Brill. Out front again to Alcard. Alcard trying to get around. Does goes to Combs, and he'll score. Well, that's something else. They're wrapping around a 6'9 guy. Oh, yeah. 46 28, 119 to go in the third quarter. That's As a big Fields gets it. Mike Fields on a drive, dump pass to Robinette. It's up. No, oh, good, but he's fouled. Now, what Scott's going to have to do is learn how to stick those as he goes into the basket. Now, that's an opportunity for a three point play, and instead, he's going to get two foul shots. And here's what's going to happen. He gets the ball here. Now, he just has to go right up to the glass with it instead of going with the soft hands up. Mm -hmm. He has to just take that ball right to the rack and get the basket, draw the foul, and then you're shooting for three instead of having to earn two. Go the, uh, what Torrey Wilson likes to call the direct route. <laughs> yes. So two for Scott Robinette. The first is up and no good. Hit off the front of the rim. 1.10 to go here in the third quarter. And the campers with a 46-28 lead. And one more to go for the big center. Now he has another year to learn all this stuff. Yes. <laughs> so he's gonna be okay. It is up and good. 19 is the lead by the campers, 47-28, and the clock moves with 106 to go. This is Van Meter to Harriet. Harriet trying to go around Robin, and he put up the stop sign there, no doing. Gives it off to Alkire. 4-2 from 15 is good. Hampshire's recovering, but they're down by 17. You know, Paul, when they, Hampshire gets motion in their offense, they produce more possibilities for themselves to score. And a backward violation. This was a good call. Now, the, the partisan crowd not happy with that, but the rule well, states you've got to have possession with the ball, with the dribble, and Hampshire did not have that. So it's a backcourt call against the campers. Van Meter gives it to Harriet. See, I don't know about that, Jamie. I think the if goals. you knock the ball, I think if you knock the ball backcourt, we're going to get a look here, and we're a little bit late on that, and Whitaker picks it up, but I think that Ham Okay, here we go. We're going to run it back. And there is Hampshire knocking See, the ball back. Yeah, there's no, no possession by Hampshire. Well, it doesn't make any difference if there's a possession, if somebody knocks the ball backcourt. Well, campers get it back on a backcourt violation. Jesse has it in the corner to Fields. To Jesse, out front to Salas. To Whitaker. Back to Whitaker again, faints the shot. Back to Salas, to Jesse. Jesse will drive, dump pass. 
for Field. Turn around on the baseline. In and out, no good. Jesse with a rebound to put back. Does a couple of victory laps and falls through for two. All right, Allegheny to take off the press with three seconds. And no shot will be taken. The third quarter has expired and we'll take a break. Eight minutes to go in this contest. And at the end of three, it's the campers 49 and Hampshire 30. We'll be back right after this. City Toyota Chevrolet Geo and Buick is proud to be a part of showcasing our high school athletes as they take to the courts during this 94 season. Motor City Toyota Chevrolet Geo and Buick understands hometown spirit, working as a team to bring their customers the best service, quality, and winning prices. Everyone's a winner at Motor City Toyota Chevrolet Geo and Buick, your hometown dealer. You're watching coverage of high school basketball. Okay, here's uh, a look at our high school basketball scoreboard on Channel 4. Allegheny over Hampshire at the end of three, 49 to 30. Campers with a 19-point lead, a comfortable lead, um, and moved out from a 10-point halftime lead and a one-point first quarter lead. Yes. So the campers actually had to come from behind and in the long range, this will be a come from behind win. But Allegheny had to turn on the Jets late in the first quarter to come back to get that one point lead. And they'll put it in play first here in the fourth quarter. Denny Salas gives it to Mike Fields. Now there's a lot of motion in the offense for Allegheny as Salas gets it back to Whitaker. Faints a three, drives in around Combs. This shot is up and in and out, no good. Coming down with a rebound is Mike Harriet. Still trying to get it out. Does. Gives it to Brill. Brill almost sideswiped by Whitaker. Gets it off the van meter. And now to Alcar inside. This is Combs for two, and it's good. Combs getting the ball on the block, just turning around, squaring up, and shooting the ball. That easy. 49 32. And Denny Salas looks into the defense. Man to man by Hampshire. Well, Hampshire has to go man to man because they're down by 17. And a three second violation. And uh, both uh, DJ Jesse and Mike Harvey turn around and say, wait, was that you or was that me? But now the Trojans take over. Toby Eric was yelling 40, 40, and this is 40. Good play by Whitaker. Whitaker just saw that right out of Mike Harriet's hands. Whitaker drives coast to coast. It's in and out, no good. Jesse, he'll get the put back to go for two. Whitaker ought to get something out of that. A steal and maybe an assist. Here's another Mike steal by Harvey. Harvey gets the seed. 53-32, Van Meter, down floor to Brill, with fields to beat, goes to the glass and scores. I'll tell you what, Adam Whitaker made a move out there on Harriet that if you do that in the parking lot, you get arrested for it. <laughs> you know, uh, Coach C of High Hampshire was going to uh, call a timeout, and then after he got the breakaway, he decided against it. Mike Harvey with a nifty move, goes up with a shot, it's no good, and a whistle there underneath, as he is fouled on the play. And the foul is on number 30, Mike Harriet. That'll be four fouls on Harriet. Steve Friend comes in for the campers, and Mike Fields will take a seat. Allegheny going a little bit bigger as Fields comes out and Friend comes in. Patterson to inbound. Out to Jesse. DJ, once Salas out front gets him there, and Denny will take over. 6.23 to go in the fourth quarter. Hampshire with the zone on the out-of-bounds play, now matching up a little bit out of the 2-3. Harvey with it. The Friend out-of-bounds, last touch by Harriet. Entry pass on the blocks from the wing often has to be a bounce pass to get it to him. The trick is to get it high enough for your big guy to get the ball without getting it intercepted on an overplay. Jesse inbounds to Salas. Hampshire's defense trying to trap here on the sideline. Salas has it knocked away from him and a foul on the play. Mike Harvey got it. But Salas, I'm surprised we didn't get a walk call on that because Salas rolled a little bit with the ball. Okay, they're going after the ball. And the ball gets away. They would rule that Salas never had possession. And then the foul, of course. The Team. foul is on Seth Holmes. That's four on Combs. This is Adam Whitaker. 
for Jesse. He'll pull it up for three. Off the side of the rim, no good. And coming down with a rebound is Mike Harriet. Uh, let's to Van Meter. Van Meter looking for help. Got his help pick by Whitaker. On the break, Whitaker goes to the glass and scores for two. Nice recovery by Mike Harvey. The shot no good by Mike Harriet. Campers come up with another turnover as Jesse misses the layup. A little bit of showboat on that and missed it. Laid it out too long and with too much English on it. Five and a half to go. 55-34 and a foul into play as Adam Whitaker rides Bruce Van Meter down the floor for a couple of blocks. Bruce is up and okay and Adam I think is going to take a seat right now because uh, he might be a little tired. There it is there. Whitaker recovering on defense and just uh, kind of puts Van Meter down to the court and he gives a little smile as he gets up. Well, you worry. We saw those German skaters uh, from the Olympics and young lady broke her chin open on a play like that falling face first into the ice. Uh -oh. The ball taken away from Savini. Here's Jesse on the break. Hit the side of the backboard with it. Salas with a re-put and it's no good. He's fouled. Well, you saw, I thought Paul DJ was going to load the cannon. Here's DJ on the breakaway and some traffic there and a very good defensive play. Did not make contact with DJ. No call made by the officials. Good. No call by the refs. But on the and as your scoreboard sponsored by Dr. Paul Lynn. Dental Dental Care for the entire family. Located on 115 South Central Street in Cumberland. Dr. Lynn would like to wish good luck to all of the local teams. You know, correct that address, 115 South Center Street. Salas makes the first of two, puts up the second. This one's short. And coming down with a rebound is Seth Combs. And now I get out my tongue over my eye teeth, and I can't see what I'm saying. <laughs> Steve Friend makes up a pass in the middle. Ahead for DJ Jesse, two on two. The campers, Jesse goes behind the back, shoots it through. Mike Fields, faints once, faints twice, and a three-second violation. See more three-second violations called this year, and uh, uh, that's one of the point of points of emphasis that the officials uh, talked about earlier in the year. And a little bit of a, a delay there that led to the uh, the three seconds as Allegheny was in the lane setting up for the rebound. This is Colby Nichols drive shot rejected against Steve Friend rejects the second one. Ball still loose, tipped ahead. Fields to Jesse, loads the cannon. Kaboom with a double-handed jam for two. And Elvis has left the building. Savini tries to recoup. No good. Dermer coming down with the rebound. Ahead to Salas. Salas turn around. Jay blocked there and a good play by Brill, but a foul on the call. Whoa. <laughs> This is the action that we saw for four quarters against Kaiser the other night. Now here's DJ getting up there and oh, that'll loosen your lug nuts. And he feels pretty good about that. I'm sure he does. Get a little air time there. Frequent flyer miles here at Campobello. There's the block, a block again, and here they go. They're off to the races. Down the stretch they come. No doubt about it. Salas makes the first of two, making it 59-34, 4.22 to go. And one more to go. For Salas, it's good. Mike Carter will come into the game, and he'll run the show for the campers. Denny Salas will take a seat. 4.22 left on your game clock. It's the campers 60, the Hampshire Trojans 34. I don't know. When we went to the Dr. Paul Lynn scoreboard, board, it was under 20. And uh, people may be thinking that it was the Paul Lind scoreboard, <laughs> and we turned it into a lapper after that. This is Combs for three. It's no good. Fields get a running rebound. Two on one break for the campers. Fields goals off the glass and good for two. The 28-point game, folks, in four minutes to play. Savini with Mike Carter on him. Gives it up to Brill. Give and go inside to Alkire to Nichols. His shot is up. It won't go, but he's fouled into play. You know, you're... When you contest every shot, you're going to commit fouls. And this is what happens here. Here's the wraparound pass, a very nice one. Fields going after the ball. P.J. Yates comes in. That's good news. I talked to Toby Eric last night. 
And he said because P.J. took a rough tumble in that Kaiser game, he did not practice. So uh, he might be a little bit stiff, but uh, it's good to see him back on the court. Nichols with a first of two. Cannot connect. 62-34, 3.49 left to go. And one more for Kobe Nichols. This one's also no good. Robinette had the tip. Jesse comes down with a bound. Jesse in the middle, leaves it there on a nice pass. Carter with the basket. DJ Jesse spreading the wealth. 64-34. Nice. right ball. This got the 30 in a big hurry. Savini inside to Evans. Shot rejected by Scott Robinette. Yeah. That, that's got to be eight yeah. blocks tonight. It, it's kind of sad that it's a 30-point game now because I think Hampshire came in here as DJ Jesse leaves. Hampshire came in here with a good game plan, showed that they could break the Allegheny pressure. The problem was, and this had something to do with the Allegheny defense, they didn't shoot the ball quite as well as they needed to to hang in there. And once it got beyond, say, 15 points, it was Katie bar the door. Combs with a half hook, no good. Robinette with a rebound. Leaves it off to P.J. Yates. Little perk on the drive. One-handed half hook is up and no good. Coming down with a rebound is Alkire. He'll leave it for Savini. Joe Humbertson, by the way, came in for D.J. Jesse. Savini still with the ball. Leaves it out front for Brill. Brill to Alkire. Faints the three, and Jake Dermer we will bid hasta la vista to he, Jake. He fouls out, and he gives a big smile. Say hi to your folks, Jake. <laughs> And have a seat. That, and very handsome young man you have, Mrs. Dermer. Now, what's the story there, Jamie? <laughs> well, we had the moment. Dermer goes out of the game, coming in number 23, and that's Ed Talley. The story is that it's a, a couple of weeks ago when you and I did a game, it was at the, the Fort Hill Allegheny game. And I had said Jake Dermer reminds me of style of play, reminds me of uh, Bill Lambeer. It's not pretty, but it gets the job done. Well, Mrs. Dermer heard the it's not pretty and thought I was referring to Jake. <laughs> And a, a, a mutual family friend stopped me at the hospital and said, I think you better straighten that out. <laughs> so he is a handsome lad, ma'am. Uh, a little blue ball goes off the floor, courtesy of that young lady. Steve Robinette, or excuse me, Scott Robinette takes a seat. Ben Franklin, Shanklin. number 14. That's Shanklin. I was patriotic when I was making up these score sheets. Well, that's Shanklin. It should be Shanklin. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hampshire makes some wholesale changes as well. Coming in for them is Bruce Van Meter, number 12. Mike Brian Brill, number 22. Number 32 is Jimmy Lehman. And number 40, Minor Watts. This is Brill with the ball for Hampshire. Leaves it out front for Van Meter. This is Watts, number 40, with the ball. Out front to Lehman. Lehman on the drive, kicks it out, and it will go out of bounds, and touched last by Joe Humbertson. So Hampshire will take over with 2.44 to go, and they trail by 29. Lehman contested there by Carter. Inside, brilled the shot. Will it go? It won't, but he is fouled in the play. 2.40 to play. You know what's impressive about the kids Hampshire brings off the bench is they're playing hard. They're showing concept of what the team was doing before they got in there. I think Coach C has a very good program at Hampshire, and you're going to uh, see, no pun intended, mm -hmm. the Trojans among the basketball elite of the area as long as he's, as he's there. Brill makes the first. Yeah, this is a team that, that came out and gave Allegheny everything they could handle in the first quarter. As Brill makes the second, he will leave the game in favor uh, number 34, and that's Derek Thorne. So inbounding for the campers is Shanklin. To Carter, back to Little Perk, P.J. Yates. To Carter. This is Shanklin. Drives a shot, and he walked. Good call there. <laughs> What's going on here? P.J. goes up with that hammer on the <laughs> one drive, and now... Uh, and watch Shanklin, here. Ben Just with the uh, spin move, mm -hmm. and, and Tom Benson travel. Van Meter with the ball. Gives off to Shanklin. He goes underneath. The shot up. And no good on the play by Thorne. They get it back out to Van Meter. And a foul underneath. A pushing call. We'll see who the foul's on. 
The foul on the camper is number 23, Ed Talley picks it up. That'll be his first and team foul number seven on the campers. 2.08 to go in the contest. You look inside as Talley overplays and picks up the personal foul. And on the line is Minor Watts. The first is up and good. First, there's a couple of tests remaining for the campers. They have to play Fort Hill again. They have a city contest against Bishop Walsh coming up. Watts makes two, and it's 64-39. 2.08 to go. As Shanklin with the ball to Yates. And P.J. bring it up himself. Give it off there to Mike Carter. Down low, Humbertson, turn around, Jay is a little short. Coming up with a shot, up and no good, just off the front of the rim by Ed Talley. Robinette on the hustle, but it's Van Meter coming down with the ball. He'll drive and score off the glass for two. That's the second time he's moved, used a move like that. This time, no foul call, but, you know, he does a nice job getting to the hole. Talley, back to Carter, 4-3. And it's off the side of the rim, no good. Van Meter comes in for the rebound for Hampshire. 133 to go. As Carter rides Van Meter off the ball, and he'll circle back in. This is Lehman for three. In and out, no good. And Tally with a rebound. Outlets ahead. Intended for Joe Humbertson. Picked off there by Jimmy Lehman. Lehman behind the back pass. Goes off to Seville. His shot is up. It rattles around and good for two. Pretty, pretty, pretty snazzy. Sam Seville makes it 64-43. One minute to go as P.J. Yates drives. Good hit fade by P.J. And he'll get the victory lap to fall. 66-43. Under a minute to go. And Van Meter brings it up against P.J. Yates. Leaves it off for Thorne. Thorne inside intended for Lehman. It goes out of bounds. And the campers will take over with 46 seconds to go. Your Kelly auto service scoreboard. Are you concerned about safety on wet roads? Worried about hydroplaning or wet skids? Ask about the K Aquamart wet weather radio at the Kelly Auto Service store in Granite Square, LaVale. Hustling after the ball is Thorne. Jimmy Lehman, rather, comes up with it. This is Thorne. Miner drops it off. Picked off there by Ed Talley, the campers. P.J. Yates picks up the loose ball with 20 seconds to go. And P.J. will leave it out there for Carter. Here's Humbertson. Strong to the hole and scores. Joe Humbertson makes it 68-43 with 10 seconds to go. And Van Meter to Thorne from 15. Partially rejected, and Talley got it. Here comes P.J. with three seconds, and he is fouled in the play. He goes down hard, too. He's up and okay. P.J. and Ice getting to know each other. Yes. <laughs> Bounced right up off there, though. Now watch the way he tumbles here. This scares me, folks. There's the attempt for the steal right on the knee. Oh. Of course, it was uh, bent when it happened, so it would probably be a bruise, but <laughs> you just don't like to see that happen. One and one for P.J. Makes the first. 69-43. The Trojans won the pregame, the JV game, 53-48. Jamie Kidwell with 15 points for Hampshire, and Eric Andrews with 18 for the campers. And there is the buzzer as P.J. misses the second one. And your ball game is over. A hard fought game with the campers. It's too much for this Hampshire Trojan team. Pulled away with some great offensive moves in the fourth quarter. Your final score, Allegheny 69, Hampshire 43. We'll be back right after this. Motor City Toyota Chevrolet Geo and Buick is proud to be a part of showcasing our high school athletes as they take to the courts during this 94 season. Motor City Toyota Chevrolet Geo and Buick understands hometown spirit, working as a team to bring their customers the best service, quality, and winning prices. Everyone's a winner at Motor City Toyota Chevrolet Geo and Buick, your hometown dealer. You're watching coverage of high school basketball. Back at Campobello, we're in the coach's corner where the Allegheny Campers have registered a 69-43 victory today 
over the Hampshire Trojans. This was a great game to watch, a very entertaining game this evening as the Allegheny Campers put on an offensive display in the second half that uh, was the equal of any high school team I have seen thus far this season or in uh, years memorable. This team put a lot of points on the board. And Paul, you are next to the happy camper coach, Toby Eric, and the real boss of the house there at the Eric residence. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, coach, I thought Hampshire tested you as well as anybody in the last 10 games. Is that uh, your assessment? Well, you know, I, I agree with you. Hampshire's well coached. Larry C. does a nice job with those kids. And, you know, uh, they come out, they played hard, they broke our press the first half. And you got to give them a lot of credit for how the first half went. I, I thought we, did, we didn't play very well the first half, but I thought a lot of that was due to the way they played. And, and they come to play every night, and, and he's got some good young kids in that program. And you're going to hear from Hampshire in the next couple of years. In the first quarter, you have that 16 to 15 lead. What was it like in the huddle between quarters? Well, we, we were talking a lot about playing hard and, and playing our defense like we're capable of playing it. We just didn't think we had the defensive intensity that we need in the half court or the full court. They were beating us on breaks, and we thought it was just a matter of being step slow in the first quarter. Yeah, but then the press finally did start getting the ball to turn over to Allegheny and finally did register, and uh, that is uh, something that has really carried you guys for most of the season. Well, you know, we depend on our pressure to turn the ball over, and if we're not getting the team to turn the ball over, we're going to have a rough night. And uh, uh, I thought the kids picked up the intensity in the second half. I thought Adam Whitaker gave us a big boost off the bench and, and raised our energy level when we had some guys in some foul trouble. And, uh, and that was a big key, I thought, in the middle of the third and in the fourth quarter when we pulled it out. Who you got with you tonight? This is my daughter, Taylor, and she's – I don't guess she knows she's on TV yet, but she's one year old, and I had to give her equal time. <laughs> she's, she's, she's teething a little bit. Yes, she is. She's having a, a thumb here, but uh, she's a sweetheart. <laughs> very, very definitely so. Toby, Eric, congratulations again. Another big win. Thank you very much. 18-0 Allegheny. And the campers, of course, winning uh, this evening by a score of 69-43. to 26-point uh, win. Uh, fortunate that it is that size for Allegheny, but I thought Hampshire played a lot better than a 26-point loss. Yeah, Hampshire came in and, and really gave some offensive intensity into the first quarter uh, and had the campers really on the ropes. And I heard Toby say that they just didn't play well in the first half. Well, Hampshire did not uh, go for the, the throat on that, as I think they probably could have. Coach C's uh, players didn't react to that and really kind of let an opportunity get away because if they had really run out on Allegheny, gone to an eight, maybe 10 point lead in the first quarter, maybe this game's a little different complexion come down to the end of it. Yeah, certainly so. Of course, Allegheny uh, undefeated at 18 and 0, uh, an excellent season, undefeated season in progress. And one thing about undefeated teams, folks, is when they are uh, undefeated, the first loss is very, very hard to register. I mean, if you want to go into the playoffs, you don't want one loss. You want to go in undefeated because that first loss is very hard to pin on somebody. And, of course, Allegheny is in that situation where it might be one of those situations where they get into the playoffs undefeated. We can, we can say that now because it's getting kind of close. Yeah, there have been uh, instances where teams have undefeated seasons and don't get into the playoffs. I think today, though, if I had to put my finger on one guy that really made a difference in this game was Adam Whitaker in the first quarter. And Toby, I think, mentioned that. Adam came in at a time when you pointed out very correctly that the campers were just sort of meandering around on offense. And Whitaker brought a lot of energy in that and really kind of jump-started the offense for the campers. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for our coverage of high school basketball on Channel 4. We'd like to thank Commercial Video Services for all the production and all the great shots tonight. For Jamie O'Hanlon, I'm Paul Mullen. You make it a good evening.